when I first started, I was looking at one particular technology and why a technology was not adopted by women while it was being adopted by many men. And that reasoning or that analysis or the processes why women were not really adopting the technology actually started, made me to think that yes, there's something that is missing here and we should have a gender dimension into everything that we do at ICRISAT. And that's how I started with working to, with, with women and working on gender issues. Now, and another aspect that I would like to add is that being a sociologist, I always like to put social relations at the heart of gender dynamics, and especially in agriculture. And that relationship makes a lot of difference in understanding why men and women behave differently and why they, be, uh, they behave similar or differently. So there has been a lot of change. We have progressed a lot. So we now don't look only at time allocation or time use patterns, but we are also looking at diversity. We are looking at dietary diversity. We are looking at diversity of livelihood sources, income sources, diversification, looking at morbidity. We are looking at reproductive history. We are looking at children under five years of age. And we are also looking at adolescent boys and girls. So when we talk of gender now, we don't look at just men and women, but it covers both men, women, boys, girls, youth. So it's all, it also includes generation as well. And that's a big difference. And that kind of data that we are now generating actually helps us to better understand the pathways through which the, uh, there's improvement not only in nutrition, but also improvement in the overall well-being and thereby the empowerment of the rural communities. So the process is what we have now added. So we are not just collecting data, just numerics, but there is understanding the processes, the role of different institutions, the role of different uh, uh, policies that actually shape up these different behaviors along with the norms and the cultural attitudes that are already existing or prevalent. There is no agricultural data set that captures nutritional data set alongside the agricultural and other variables. And so the VDA said that's one of the influencing or insightful information that the VDA said can actually give you because it adds the nutritional data to the agricultural data that is already being collected. And again, it is long term. So we have three different points of time where we are collecting these kinds of nutritional data. And this helps us to see the situations in the 70s, in the 90s, and now. And one example or one analysis that we are currently doing is looking at, is there a change in the dietary diversity, the, the, the eating patterns, you know, what kinds of foods are being consumed now, and then what they were being concerned. And very surprising, the data, the preliminary analysis actually is telling us that there's not much difference in the diversity of diets of the rural poor from then and now, from 1975 and to 90s and to 2013, 14. Almost 40 decades, you see that there's not much change in the diversity, though you can see that the number of food groups that are being consumed have increased. But yet to see if the kind of food that is being taken, the intake, there you see that there is no much difference and which is a very surprising re result, which is quite counterintuitive because you think that with the progress in the economy, you see that you try, you, you actually think that there will be a greater improvement in the nutritional outcomes, there will be greater diversity in diets, there's a wider basket of foods that are being consumed, but that is not the case. And so when we complete a full analysis, because the data has just come in, we would be able to tell you what are those reasons or what are those factors that are important in deciding diversity of diets. So that's just one example. Another question that we are attempting to answer through this VDSA, and I think that it's only, maybe it's only the VDSA that can answer this question, is that why has income increases not translated into nutritional outcomes? And the VDSA can now actually answer that income is a very small fraction, you know, which actually has an impact on the nutritional status, especially on the calorie and micronutrient intake. There are a lot of other factors that condition nutritional status. And two most important ones which uh, we are now finding out uh, is, one is the behavior change, and the second is on sanitation. 
So hygiene, sanitation and the behavior change play a very important role in conditioning nutritional status, especially with respect to micronutrient intakes.